Hello and welcome back to the channel guys. So today it's just a sort of catch up on what I'm doing with this new translucent version of the AMT Enterprise D. <clears throat> Pardon me. So what I've decided to do on this one is sand back literally all the rays detail. So that includes all the, the, the life pods, escape hatches, whatever you want to call them. They're all gone here. I've still got to do it around the, this edge. And the reason I'm doing this is because they're all inaccurate. They're all spaced in the wrong places. Uh, the alignment's out. So if I've got a smooth surface to start with, then I can carefully place the decals, or decals, in the right position once it's all painted. Uh, I've also done this, the missing windows. This is supplied by Motion Picture Picture Miniatures, uh, Wayne. Uh, just do them in a pack, you can check out his website. That's come out reasonably well. If I can get a close up on the camera. That's very easy to do, just cut a hole and then just keep cutting it or carving it, sanding it, whatever you want to do, and should you get the perfect fit. And then just a little bit of super glue, hold it in place. And then once that's done, I've used epoxy glue. And that's never going to come out of there again. So that's all good on that one. You may wonder why there's a painted black one here. It's just an experiment to see how much light block it produces and what sort of colour tone it's giving me. And the reason for that is because what I'm thinking is when it comes to, to time to actually start painting or light blocking in a model, I'm thinking of doing a white primer on the outside and the reason for that is because it's translucent as you can see you can see my fingers through there so if it's white it's then going to bounce the light around inside here even better then once that's fully cured then I would back it with plenty of black then a grey then go on to my base colours and Aztecs and so on so that's my plan with that. The top half of the saucer, again, motion picture miniatures, resin part, it's not glued in yet. Cut the hole all the way through. I've made it ever so slightly bigger, and the reason for that is because when you put the even the kit part in, it's out of alignment. See these grid lines are supposed to be the centre of, of, of the ship. Even those aren't perfect, but when you line it up with the the bridge, it's out by a few degrees. So I've carved the hole slightly bigger just to move that bridge around a little bit more in alignment. And this is a bit I'm undecided about just yet. I've got an aftermarket as resin part for the hangar bay door here, which is supposed to be more screen accurate to the six foot studio filming model, which was used in generations. Now I could put that in, it's obviously it's more work, but it will make it accurate. So I'm probably 80% likely to put it in not 100 percent yet we'll see how that goes uh i'll go it again on here all the the raised surfaces they've all gone there's still a little bit of cleaning up to do uh, there's a, some of the these bits of raised um but pretty much we're almost there with that now it's nice and smooth looking great all right now this section here most people call them the, the arboretum windows that's, that's, that's what believe they are when i was younger i always thought they were like part of the um impulse drive units because obviously you've got an impulse engine here and one here and you've got two blue bays or windows which kind of reminiscent to the motion picture enterprise which has got the single blue dome so i used to, when i was younger i used to think that was something to do with the impulse drives 
but the later learn that they're not there are Burrito windows. They're very poorly made on the kit. I'm going to say it's just come up. It's difficult with this translucent plastic to show up on the camera. They're out of alignment, um, they're not squared off very well, they're kind of like wonky and a bit of a pain to, to light. Now there is um, a couple of aftermarket parts I believe for this. Well there is in fact, you can get the brass photo etch set I think from Green Strawberry, they do them, which I actually have with me now, it's just come through the post. Uh, I reached out to on Facebook and asked if anyone had a spare set and thankfully one guy did. So a big thank you and a shout out to Matt McGuire. He said these, they came in a post today. You see they're so much more cleaner and accurate than what you get on the kit. So that's the first option. Another option is 3D printed. Now I'm no 3D printer, I don't even have a 3D printer. So, uh, but a lovely chap in the USA reached out to me, uh, Mr. Wayne Treadwell, I think that's how you pronounce it. So he sent me these. So he wants me to review them, uh, give him feedback. So he sent three different parts for them. Go focus. Yeah. So this is one whole piece. And while that is a lot better than what's on the kit, it's still not as sharp as the photo etch set. Focus there but like what he's trying here so you get a kind of frosted clear part that literally sits in the bottom of that and you know, right there we go come on focus no it's not going to focus now anyway so the idea is we would carefully cut out the original piece, then insert that piece into there like that. And then the light would shine through. There's different thicknesses. He sent me two more in the pack. So I've got to try these out and see which works best. So that was 0.35 millimeter. That one's 0.55 millimeter thick. I haven't actually taken these out of the pack yet because they could be quite fragile. But if you, if I can get a bit of white paper behind it, there we go. Focus better. They're not bad actually. They're quite sharp. The squares and the rectangles, a million times better than what's on the kit almost as close as the brass photo etch. So I'm really looking forward to trying these out on the kit. So thank you so much, uh, Wayne Treadwell for that. Right, let's pop them over there so they don't get lost. So, right, so where are we at? Right, so that's the saucer section. Now on to the, the rear neck section. Standard kit part. Again, I've just put some black on it to see what, how much uh, light blocking that would provide. I've sanded down the kit part, but I'm not going to use this. I'm going to cut it off and use this part instead. Again, this is supplied by uh, motion picture miniatures it's trans well it's mostly clear kind of translucent uh, resin i've just put a bit of light block on it and silver foil to reflect the light back 
this is just so far it's just in test phase a little bit of black paint in there just to see what sort of um effect i'm going to get this one comes in a two part for the impulse drive again i've painted black around there and then there's a separate drive unit which would literally just will slot into there and then you'd glue it in place and that will become this one whole unit so i'm going to go with this because it's more accurate than the standard kit part although there's nothing wrong with that this just gives it that bit more um i should put it not realism because it's not real is it um more accurate to those filming models and also the phaser strips are reached and detailed kit parts are just smooth so oh and almost forgot when i got this kit some of you may have known uh, i shared it on facebook this piece is completely missing through the production not molded should be like this I did reach out to round two and they said they are going to send me an, a complete one of these but it could take four weeks um, so in the meantime me being me I thought how hard can it be to, to, to just to make up a little bit a bit of plastic style in carved it the shape glued it on a bit of super glue a little bit of filler which still needs cleaning up and I've test fitted it into the warp and the cell and it fits perfect. I've done the trenches. They still need a bit of widening actually or tidying up to run cable powers up to the warp uh, engines, the cells side themselves. Again, I haven't really done much on this. I've sanded it back so it's all smooth. There's no raised detail on it. I've still got to do the life hatches and pods and boots, whatever you call them on here, get rid of those. This is going to be where the mounting hole goes in. This kit actually had a hole here. So I filled it with a bit of sprue, glued it in, sanded it down. It just needs a few of these little lines to be engraved into it. And that would be all good. You won't be able to see it on camera, probably. And I've got the rear red and green lights so you've got top and bottom tiny little holes in there for fiber optics to come through I think it's almost about it this one again is just glued it's got a bit of fit on it so it still needs a bit of work to do so I'd rather have it like this it, it's strong it's not going anywhere um, it's all lined up perfectly Again, a bit of black on it to stop the light going where I don't want it. Black and they paint it over white. Keep it the, the light bouncing around really well in there. So, so that's, that's it, I think. Um, yeah, I think the next update will be how well these Arboretum windows go. Because I'm really interested in to, to see how I can get these to fit and light up very looking forward to that all right so that's it guys thank you very much and we'll see you on the next update bye for now